Women are currently stuck in professions they despise, have first-hand knowledge of the harsh realities of the labor market, and, most importantly, find it horrifying to contemplate reaching the end of their prime. Most women are unable to accept this last statement because of their societal training, despite it being quite telling. Women are being misled by schools, the media, and the entertainment industries into delaying marriage and having children, while simultaneously being encouraged to pursue other goals like pursuing an education, a profession, or even many partners. By the way, the word partners refers to flings rather than long-term relationships. You'll discover more about these ladies in today's movies, including why they're unhappy and resentful, and why you should avoid them at all costs. Women are blindly following extreme feminist ideologies and social conditioning. The extreme levels of feminism assert that women can live completely independently as they become CEOs and key decision makers in governments and huge organizations. What this assertion basically ignores is that soon enough, the woman will start to feel that she's soon going to cross her biological age when and where she can have children, and that will slowly and surely get to her. She will also find it incredibly hard to find a partner as she ages because men prefer younger and more feminine women. Women around the world are now hitting the wall. They're reaching the end of their biological clock and are finding out that the men they thought would be waiting for are just not interested anymore. Why? Because they grew a pair, built their empires, and moved on with younger and more feminine girls. Now that feminism and gynocentrism are in control of the modern world, especially in Western countries, leftover women are becoming more and more common. In a newspaper article, I recently read how this started in the East, that basically talked about single women in their late 20s and early 30s who put more emphasis on their education and jobs than on relationships. As a result, many of these women are left alone and single, in the middle of their 30s or reaching their 40s, only to find out that men who are doing well financially now prefer younger girls and avoid women who are too invested in their careers. So, like most of the Western world, the whole idea of a family is just being ignored as women blindly follow the ideology of feminism and are the boss babes, not needing men in their lives. Consequently, older women are just not happy as they're already hitting the wall. Women are deviating away from being feminine. She becomes more manly the more marriages and children she has. If I had to sum up how the remaining women think, I'd say ideology triumphs over biology. They ridicule guys, demonize them, and treat them with total disdain. Here are a few additional facts in case they still need them. When women have over 10 intimate partners, their desire to get married to a man is little more than a last ditch effort. Pair bonding is virtually impossible and research indicates that she probably contains DNA from several guys. Let me put it this way. Would you want some other guy's DNA in your child? In addition, society, the matrix, and other strong influential a person will always be shaped by their family's environment. The woman is likely to be more damaged than a conventional woman raised in a healthy home if the social conditioning is coupled with the absence of a good mother figure or with the presence of a promiscuous and or toxic mother. It's like going back in time, and I mean the golden times if you ever come across conventional women. Sadly, they are not very common. Even if they don't behave like it or don't have the qualities for it, leftover women and modern women as a whole desire to be treated like traditional ladies. They presumably never understood the meaning of the saying, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Social conditioning is incredibly harmful and potent. Modern women who fall for it will go to any lengths to protect the beliefs they hold dear. In actuality, they simply combine it with the information they've received from institutions, important figures, and multinational corporations with little regard for the pleasure of women. The prize for the unhappiest person goes to single career-oriented women who are roughly 42 years old. They can earn around $100,000 a year, but they're still not content and satisfied with their lives. By the way, this data was taken from a publication dedicated to women. A married man with a decent job and a nice partner is the happiest. Furthermore, according to the same article, a married man aged 39 with one child, a wife who works part-time, and a household income of between $150,000 and $250,000 is the happiest person. Women are stuck in a cycle where they have to choose feminism over reality. The fact that this woman's magazine validates what we already know about leftover women is really telling, even if the story doesn't take into account single guys making so much money. 
Women are unhappier than ever as a result of the struggle for women's liberation, particularly in the personal and financial spheres. Modern women are free to express their opinions on the intimacy revolution and their freedom to be stigma-free. Men going their own way don't even invite this kind of woman into their lives. They simply don't invite any women at all. The paradox of falling female happiness between 1970 and 2005 is an actual phrase that has been used by economists. Women's happiness has substantially decreased. These ladies don't actually know what they're talking about when they discuss patriarchy and male privilege. Men aren't good for nothing, and women can do it all by themselves, are just a few of the phrases from the woke literature that they used to recite on their early broken recordings. We don't require any men. I am entitled to choose whom I want to sleep with. Men are oppressors, etc. Women believe financial independence will grant them long-term happiness. Modern women who chose a profession in school over getting married are obnoxious, intolerable, and poor dating candidates since they are so predictable with their phrases. They've been given the myth that they can climb the corporate ladders in their 20s, have a successful profession, have several guys hit on them, and finally settle down in their mid 30 se despite the fact that they believe that this helps them have respectable savings and know themselves better. The unadulterated truth is very different. Leftover women live financially irresponsible lives for the most part. Women overspend, live paycheck to paycheck, and have so much emotional baggage that their ability to attach as a couple is permanently lost. They turn to antidepressants and other legal drugs like alcohol and cigarettes when they are in their mid-30s and early 40s and have trouble finding a man who truly wants them as a mate. However, this does not imply that men pay them no attention. Some males will thirst for any woman out there, no matter what sort they are. Women are just not worth getting into relationships with anymore. Even honorable ladies are aware of this terrible reality and openly admit that they prefer being correct and domineering to being happy. The remaining women delay having children, like imposing their ideals while spreading the gospel of tolerance and freedom, and feel oppressed simply for being female. They rarely acknowledge the fact that being a woman is far more advantageous than being a man. Working their way up the corporate ladder until their 40s, modern women did everything they could to capture and possess the essence of power they believed would make them happy. However, they only realized much too late that they had a natural need to nurture families, settle down, have loving relationships with men, and become good mothers. They can't even admit that they should have followed the rules and lived in line with their feminine nature now that they've been saturated with feminist philosophy. Perhaps in the future, women will begin to embrace adopting the stereotypical gender roles and learn how satisfied they can be. Time will tell. I think femininity is a beautiful thing when a woman do it well. A lot of women like this are in good relationships because they understand the difference between herself and her man, and she understands his needs as a man. I want to be this kind of woman, not only for a partner, but how I present myself to the world. As I always say, the laws of nature can never be ignored. What nature has intended for men and for women is how life can be lived with a balance for both men and women. Men mostly stay in alignment with their natural tendencies and choose to embrace their masculine frame. However, an increasing number of women are choosing not to be feminine because they want to take men's place in society and use the power of the media to slowly indoctrinate men to let go of their masculine inclinations. As a result, we're facing an implosion of society that doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. Thanks for watching Man Reacts. Show us your love and support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Support us and help us spread support for men around the world. Do comment and share your thoughts. We're always up for a healthy debate and discussion.